Okay, guys, I'm going to discuss working on a Polaris 4x4 system. This is a 2002 Polaris Sportsman 6x6. And so I want to show you really quickly how the four-wheel drive system works. It has this cam here. It's the 4x4 cam, and you notice it has this plate. It has three ears on it. You want to make sure these three little ears, these one, two, three... You want to make sure those little protrusions are intact and they're not flattened down. I see those flattened down sometimes. And those protrusions correspond with those low spots on the can. So it fits like that. There's also a spacer right here, which I may not be able to remove with one hand, but you can see the darker colored gray spacer in the center of this. You saw how it spins freely. Make sure that's in there. And so all these go together, and then you see the um, hexagon shape. It almost looks like a nut with splines. It goes in the center, and so all of this goes onto the shaft first. There, there's actually a bearing before all of that. So this this bearing here will go first. It goes up in there, and I'm just trying to show you really quickly how the assembly of this is, just in case you pulled it loose and didn't know. I didn't pay attention and then this plate goes on next and then this cam goes on next again I want you to be sure that you line those up make sure that goes in there that goes on in there right there and then your next bearing goes and this bearing faces outward like that so that it tapered in is facing outward and then your entire hub assembly goes on after that I have the hub assembly here have two hubs here because I'm trying to film all of this. I'm not going to put it all together yet. I'm just trying to show you the order of assembly. This would go on next. And then once you get that on there, this bearing tapered in faces inward, goes in next. And then after you get that in there, there's a washer. Should be a thick washer. It goes on next, and then the castle nut goes on last. So, tapered baron, large thick washer, castle nut. There's also a cotter pin that goes in here. I won't demonstrate all that, but you know. So anyway, just in case you pull this apart and everything fell loose and you're like, how in the world did this go? That's how it goes. And I want to show you quickly how it works, just so you know. This wire, this long wire lead, it actually had, almost looked like weather stripping, but it had some type of glue that secured it inside that inner channel. And then it runs up the strut and it goes up here. I'm gonna show you where it plugs in at. Plugs in underneath the headlight pod. There's two connectors, They're, I, they, are, they are identical. I don't think it matters which side they go on. Um, but you have a right side and a left side and they plug in there. That's all it does. It should be an easy wire to get to. It may go through a wire loom. So there was a wire loom tube that was right here and I had to split the wire loom. Where's the wire loom? Um, anyway, it's somewhere. Here. Oh, there it is. So anyway, this is what we call wire loom and it protects the wire and just shields it from dirt and abrasions and things so anyways they had three um zip ties on it i cut the zip ties that's where this wire lead what runs to once you remove your cam let's set that right here and let's get this bearing out because you don't want these bearings to drop on the floor and gather dirt dirt is a wear element so in order, basically what we're having problems with is there's a magnet here. It's an electromagnet. And that electromagnet, what it does is it grabs this plate and this causes this plate to adhere to it. And when that plate adheres to that electromagnet, it locks this cam on this side and it causes these, causes the inner, the inner keeps trying to rotate when you're driving. But the outer aspect of the cam is stationary. And that causes the inner part of the cam to force 
these little rods, these little tubes, these circular tubes you see here, rollers, cause those circular rollers to expand basically, and that grabs the entire hub and engages the four wheel drive. So the something you'll see on a lot of these is there may be some magnetism, but it may be very weak, and that's what we have. We have anemic reaction from the magnet here, and it's not enough to lock this plate on. There is magnetism. I guess that's why it can be sometimes tricky to diagnose because there actually is magnetism. It's relatively strong, but it's not strong enough. I'm able to still spin it easily with my hand. So um, continuity between these two wires, I don't really know what it is. It does reek um, a certain number of ohms. It even sparks and like has magnetism, so it works, but it's not strong enough. So what we can do is you can replace just this um, magnetic coil in here, but you have to first remove this outer ring. And the way I remove this outer ring is I got a punch, locked it on some pliers, because you don't want you have to hit this pretty hard, and you don't want to damage you know the shiny aspect of it because there's literally a seal. Let me show, let's see if I can show you that. There's a seal if you can see that seal right here. This is in the hub. This is oil filled with ADW90 gear oil. Uh, somebody may use a different type of oil, but you can use ADW90. But there is a seal and it does hold oil. So if you damage this, then it's gonna leak. So you don't wanna damage this. And these parts are not always easy to get. I think you can get this part, but I did it without damaging it. So anyway, what you wanna do is insert your punch like precisely behind the backside lip tap it with a hammer it took quite a few blows to knock this off um, I even had to use a little bit of heat so I have a little torch here and I just kind of briefly heated it around the side a lot of people will say oh you don't never supposed to put heat on that thing but we're removing this and this coil is bad we know the coil is bad so even if we burn the coil up under there we don't want to do that but you we're replacing it so it doesn't really matter if you end up burning the coal, but you don't want to you don't want to put that much heat on it. It just takes a little bit because this is a very thin piece of metal. And so after like nine or ten blows, I managed to get it off, and uh, I can just pull it off my hand. But basically, the reason heat sometimes works is because there is adhesive behind here, and it's been on there since 2002. You know, it's been on there 14 years. So with that length of time, I don't know that you're gonna get it off without using some heat. And again, I only I just kind of like took the torch and went like that and took it off. Like it wasn't even it was barely too hot. You know, you couldn't touch it with hand, by a hand, but it, it I didn't put that much heat on it at all. And so it probably was not enough to burn the wires. But you don't want to introduce heat on these wires. But since we're replacing these wires, then that's the risk we have to take. So the next thing is getting the wires off um and that's something i gotta do now and doing it with one hand may not be possible but this coil comes off and what i would suggest doing is getting a knife and just kind of running it behind here again if you say well i may cut one of these wires you very well may but we're replacing all of this but let me try it i'm just trying to get my glove off so that I can, uh, let me see here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it with one hand, guys. This is what happens when you don't have the right video equipment. I try to make these videos just so you guys can see. But you really need to take a knife and run it behind here. And I don't have a knife on me either. So, um, yeah, let me try it. Hold on, let me grab a knife. I want you to take a knife and I want you to I want you to angle the knife just a little away from coil and just work your way behind here like that. Cause it has glue on it. And uh again, we're replacing this. We already have made the determination that it's bad. If you've made the determination that yours is bad, the way you do it is there may be magnetism, but if it's weak and you can easily spin that plate on there then it's bad it's supposed to be very strong obviously i got mosquitoes trying to get me man these georgia mosquitoes
But um, just work your way down and. See, it's trying to make its way off, but um, that glue, the adhesive is pretty strong. So, um, I want you to just uh, continue to circumnavigate that. And I'm trying to hold the camera and do this so. A bit of, you would you would have far more success doing it than me because I literally didn't come prepared for this. All right, maybe we got enough, and then you want to insert a screwdriver. And you can see it's trying to come, but there's still something holding it. So that's what I'm basically saying, guys, is that it's going to be a fight, and you just keep going around it. At this point, we're not trying to save it. We know it's bad. Um, but anyway, once you get this off, that's when you got to take care and put the new one on without destroying it. And then you just reverse this procedure. You put this back on there. Take a, a, a rubber mallet is what I would use and just lightly tap it on. As far as putting some more sealant on there, yeah, you can go get some more silicone sealant. Um, and just put it around there and then same right here. In fact, this it uses what looks like some kind of it Almost looks like weather stripping, but honestly you can probably reuse it. Just put that back inside of there And put some more sealant on there. That's all I'm going to do like that should take care of it So that's that's the essence of the four-wheel drive If you don't know if the four-wheel drive is working you can come up here to these wires and you want to check and see if you get 12 volts right there when you turn the key switch on and 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 um, engage the four-wheel drive. You may have to run the engine on some of them to um, to actually get four-wheel drive action, but you should maybe just turn the key on and flip it, maybe crank it up and let it idle. You should get 12 volts there. It goes down here, and this is a magnet and it just grabs and I, I just want to tell you like I made the mistake one time of like replacing all of these parts I'm like I don't see any visible wear maybe they're worn down if you don't see any visible wear and there's no metal shavings these things are fine they don't really go bad so don't waste your money buying one of these um, don't waste your money replacing the whole hub this magnet is nine times out of ten the culprit and like I said, it can even display magnetism, but the magnetism can be relatively weak, and it's not enough to lock the cam. So that's it for this video, guys. I'm here on Labor Day working. I don't know if my videos are not the most professional, but I just try to get straight to the content and not waste your time. Please hit like or subscribe. Again, my camera action is not great, but that's because I have to work for a living and I barely have time to make these videos. Till next time.